taking a stand in our education as far as social activism on campus. And I think that's a good thing. So we're continuing their legacy and by bringing our program to the forefront in those classes. Yeah, I also think it's uh, really important to like keep up the work that, like Jamalin said, that uh, our ancestors had before us. And I think that the issues we're dealing with are just as important as they were back then. But like, thankfully, they're not um, as a big scale as they were. You know, we deal with a lot less riots than they had to. And I think that's mostly because of the way we have progressed depending on whether they were students or not, but I think the students had a really like crucial part because this you know, the kids are the future. So the students are the people who are gonna go out into the world to make the change. I think that's one of the things I've I've learned since being here, being in college. You learn about the civil rights movement and stuff like growing up, but until I got to college I really didn't learn as much as I know now and I really didn't know the impact that young uh, collegiate, you know, men and women had and playing a part in the civil rights movement. I think that's very empowering. Um, and it's empowered me in so many different ways to kind of go out and try to make a difference and do something to help other people. So, uh, going along with Quinn and how, to, and how yes, young college students have impacted kind of like the civil rights movement and activism in general. Um, speaking of like the sit-ins that uh, originally started at a and um, and it kind of inspires me to be more active and shows that even though I'm in college, I can still have kind of this um, big role in activism and making changes in our community. So the question is, do, um, does every college student have to be an activist or is it expected to be an activist? Mm -hmm. I, think, I think when we think of activists, I think sometimes we think of the marching and the protests and things like mm -hmm. that, but you have to realize that in terms of activism, I feel like there's so many different ways you can do it, right? There's a spectrum is what I've learned. So um, you have to have everybody doing different types of things in order to reach a common goal. If we all focus on one thing, necessarily it might not be what we need to be done. We need lawyers focusing on uh, making the laws and policies better for us. We need people marching and protesting and saying this isn't right. You know what I mean? We need athletes and people in the media to speak out. We need, uh, we need a whole spectrum of things in order to, to make a movement. I think that when I think of activism, I definitely think of standing up for what you believe is right. And I do believe that us, all of us as humans, we do have, we should stand up for what we believe is right. Technically, yes. But as Quinn said, you don't, that doesn't mean you just have to go to every march, every protest or whatever. If you're standing up for what you believe is right and you feel like there's a different outlet that you feel more comfortable using, then I feel like you should definitely do that. But I do believe that we should all be I will say, Based on what you two said, um, it's not, you don't even have to like go to a march or to a sit-in. Something as little as wearing a shirt um, is gonna provoke a thought in somebody's head. It's gonna push a movement. And so just simply doing little things like wearing our bands and things like that is gonna push the movement. Yeah, like going off of that, I think, you know, just even from like an RA standpoint, um, at, like at home, what we need to do to like make those changes is just, have those discussions with other people who don't share these same opinions as us. Cause like you said, if you're going out on those marches, which can be like on a very grand scale, like I know a lot of people who see those marches and they don't even want to know like what, what they're doing. It's like, oh, they're overreacting about something. But like you can't, you can't like easily disregard something when someone's in your face talking to you, asking like why you believe what you do, right? Or like why you don't stand up for this or that. And I think it's very important to like, to uh, changes when people don't have those old discussions, like when they're at home. home. I think it's important to acknowledge, like when you think about activism and things like that, or having these discussions going off what you were saying. Um, I think it's also one of those things where we have to think about where people come from, right? You know what I mean? Like we're all taught to live a certain way. We're all taught different beliefs and things like that. So um, without making any assumption or anything like that, depending on where you come from, you might have been taught or raised a certain way, right? You might have a specific perspective. I think that the beautiful thing is, um, where activism comes about is, is changing that perspective. And I like to illustrate it in the sense of, picture yourself in a math class. Just because, say you're the teacher in this scenario, you're teaching somebody a topic, how to do a certain equation, how to use a certain formula. Just because you're teaching them right there, you're giving them a new perspective, doesn't mean that they're necessarily gonna get it right then and there. But you are planting that seed, and over time, you know, different people vary. Some people might get it quicker, some people might get it a little later on, but at least you're having that conversation and opening it up. So. I mean, the way I look at it, 
Like some people are very stubborn. I can say that because I can tend to be stubborn. Mm -hmm. So when I look at it that way, some people are taught one way and they refuse to uh, hear anybody else's opinion, whether it's on something as little as who's better, Kobe LeBron, or is it something as big as you know, Black Lives Matter versus etc. So um, I feel like you can't reach everybody, but even speaking out in general, you, reaching one person, if you just reach one person, that's already better than what you have today. So, <clears throat> and I think it's also understanding that everybody can't go. That's one of the things my mentor always told me, and it definitely pays dividends. I mean, the reality is, you know, kind of piggyback off when we were talking about planting those seeds, you know, that's, that's exactly what we have to do. We have to be that light. Um, it all starts with understanding your why and knowing the purpose of the intent and what you're doing. Because if you don't have that, then you, it's the why is like your blueprint, your foundation. If you don't have a strong why, then it's going to collapse. So by going out there, it don't it doesn't take too much. Like, oh, have you done this or have you done that? Yeah, that's a great thing to do. But ultimately, just being you. Because before they see what you're doing and who you're a part of, they see you as a human being. Do you think our why now is different from their why then? I think that, that is a really good question. Um, I think what's, what's changed the most is uh, probably how, like how we went about it. I think uh, there's a lot of the same underlying causes of like the why, but because of like the progress they've made, it's just not as open. Like some of those problems probably still do lay around and the why is still there. It's just, we have to dig deeper to get to the why now.